Hello and welcome. In case you're new here, my name is Katrina Horn and I've got the immense pleasure of talking to you today about how to create satisfying relationships. Thank you all for being here. It's wonderful to see you. Um, as I said, if you're new around here, my name is Katrina Horn. I'm a life coach and I wanted to share with you um, some of my tips and some of my reflections on what exactly, um, how, how exactly we can create a satisfying relationship. And when I say satisfying, I chose the word uh, on purpose because I could have said fulfilling, I could have said deep, I could have said a lot of things, but I'm a great fan of satisfying because satisfying is something you can so easily reach. If you're into personal development, if you're into spirituality and you are in the habit of designing your thoughts, well, actually, it's much easier to create the feeling of satisfaction than creating the feeling of ecstatic joy or elation or whatever. So it's really very comfortable and easy to get to satisfying, I find. And maybe you can relate to that. Maybe you get satisfaction too from just tidying a kitchen drawer. I do, and it takes like five minutes. Or arranging a vase of flowers or taking a pretty picture. All this can feel so immediately satisfying. And I think there's a lot to be said about that. So feel free to insert whatever you want into how to create blah, blah, blah relationships because I'm going to talk about how you create new relationships, how you improve your existing relationships. Um, and some of you were very kind and told me what you wanted to work on in your relationship. So I hope that I will answer all those questions too. So those of you who are here, thank you for being on camera and everything. I enjoy that so much. So I don't feel alone here. So thank you very much. Let's move into my content. I will stay on at the end. And if you want to ask any questions or if you want to get some, some coaching, if you're brave enough to come on and be coached, well, then you're more than welcome, right? I'm not in a hurry and I love talking to you. So let's just move on. And the first shocking thing I'm going to tell you is that nobody can actually make you happy. Only you can make you happy. And lots of people want to argue with this. And it is true, of course, people can add to your happiness, right? We can, we can feel that I would be so much happier if I had a soulmate, if I had a bunch of really good friends, or if my work colleagues were kinder or whatever. But it's really up to us to create our own happiness and then come from that place. And this is what I'm going to argue for. So please play along with me. You don't have to agree, but um, I'm going to, to tell you my thoughts on that. And maybe you want to consider that actually you are responsible for your happiness. And when you take that responsibility onto yourself, then the relationships you will create from that space will be so much more amazing. What we'll cover today is how to bring your best self to all of your relationships. And um, because I'm all for bringing our best selves. And when I talk about my best self, it's not the best self, it's my best self, right? So it's not about what other people are. It's not about comparing ourselves, it's just, having the idea that I'm actually showing up at my best. And as a former people pleaser, I have got a lot of ideas on that. Um, and just straight off the bat, I think that people pleasing is really hiding. People pleasing is not bringing your best self. Actually, it's hiding who you really are. And when we come to people from that people pleasing place, we're really cheating them out of meeting us. Also, we'll be looking into how to acknowledge our expectations for ourselves, for our friends, partners, colleagues, whoever, 
right? Both people that you choose to have in your life and the people you haven't really chosen to be part of your life, but who are there? Like colleagues, like you can't change all your colleagues. You can't change your family members. They're here to stay, right? So how can you get the most out of those relationships? How can you live peacefully with them? How can you actually bring your real self, even though you feel that if you're being your real self, this is not really what people want you to be, right? So all these expectations, we're going to take that apart. And hopefully that will inspire you to have a look at your relationships. Also, I'm very, very keen on commuting, communicating our, um, communicating our expectations clearly and how to make them meaningful. Meaningful meaning, just what is meaningful to me? Right? Again, we're not comparing. What is meaningful to me might not be to you. And I get to decide in my relationships, right? It's up to me. I've got the choice. I get to decide. And how you can nurture them so that in turn, you can get nurtured too. And some people say you must come to relationships without expectations, and I don't agree. But uh, I'll, I'll talk to you about that too. Um, and I'll also talk to you about perhaps a new way of looking at triggers. And by triggers, I mean what gets on your nerves in other people or in yourself, right? In your surroundings, those triggers. And of course, if you're here live, you're welcome to participate via the chat. So think of these two, two statements. I need somebody to make me whole. I need somebody to make life bearable. And of course, we don't tell ourselves that, but sometimes we go to friendships, we go to all our relationships, even with our most intimate relationships, with that in mind, I need something, right? Because I've, I've got something missing. So people you meet and form relationships with from need will never feel satisfying because you're not meeting up as equals. One provides and the other becomes dependent. So this needy energy is something that people can feel. Think about people who want something for, from you. People who approach you with the idea of getting something from you. That can feel very uncomfortable, can't it? And I'm inviting you really to think about how you can have all your relationships be through desire through one, through I want to and not I need to. So if you go into a relationship with the expectation of the other person that they make you happy, that they make you feel better, less alone, that they provide money for you or a house or anything like that, you're putting a lot of responsibility on that person's shoulders. Think about it. What would you say if somebody expected you to make them happy. I mean, that would be very, very heavy. So ask yourself, what kind of person would want to carry the burden of making you happy when you can't make yourself happy? Think about that, what kind of person? And I think that is why we sometimes get into relationships with people who are perverts or narcissists. Uh, I took I mean, from experience myself, because I was in that kind of relationship and I know I was coming from neediness. I came from neediness to that relationship. And that is how I got into a lot of trouble with a narcissist. And maybe you've had similar experiences. And if you are being honest, not from a place of judging yourself, but from a place of having a look at, well, how did I actually enter into that relationship? Then I think you'd be able to spot a few neediness issues there. So my excuse, my excuse was that I had immigrated to France where I live now. So I was living in Paris uh, and I couldn't speak French. Like I could say three words. Obviously I couldn't understand what anybody said to me and I couldn't say what I wanted to say. So I felt very lonely. It was really, really difficult. I had to be responsible for my own happiness. And I was, I did take responsibility, but I did also get into this relationship from the need, really, from that piece of need. 
So I'm just inviting you to have a think about, well, what kind of person would want to be in a relationship with a person who needs something from them? And I think that I, the kind of person who wants to be in a relationship where the other person depends on them is because they, they get to feel the power, don't they? They get to feel that they've got the upper hand, that they are, mm, that they're the master and the other is really the servant, so to say. Like there's this dependency happening here. And I'm just inviting you to have a look at it to see whether you can re recognize it. I'm not saying judge yourself, say to yourself that you're bad. We never do that, right? We never do that in coaching and personal development. It's not useful. We, we have a look at, at our lives. We create awareness so that we can start understanding and taking action. So have a look at this. I come to you to make me happy or I come to you, I'm already happy, fulfilled and I feel whole. Now, what kind of relationship are you going to create from that space? I'm happy, I don't need you. I've got everything I need. If you come into my life, it is so that I could feel even happier, even more fulfilled. I don't know whether you can feel more than whole, but do you see what I mean? It is just like the icing on the cake. So think of those two kinds of beings. And I'm going to talk more about this. But think about the energy behind it. Think about the beliefs and the thoughts behind those. And you may think, well, I'm not really conscious of that. And I don't think the other person is conscious of that. But we do pick up on a lot of stuff without being consciously doing it, right? Without being aware of it. So what if you could scrap the need, create your own, ha own happiness, be fulfilled in your life, feeling whole, good, about yourself, feeling enough, and coming to people just for the pleasure of it just for make, creating even more pleasure, right? I think your relationships would take on a whole new turn. And what I'm going to talk about now is not so that you scrap all your relationships that don't meet this definition. It's just so that you start thinking about it and maybe at the end of this session, you want to create some changes. So, oh. Oh, I'm sorry, I just went to the whole end of my presentation. So let's do it in the right order. Right, I was here. Don't know what I did wrong. So here's an exercise. Let's do that. Let's pick a relationship you're not entirely satisfied with. With a colleague, with a partner, with a friend, with a family member, anybody, with your neighbor. Pick any relationship. And you're going to ask yourself on a scale of one to 10, one being not feeling satisfied and 10 being fully satisfied, how would you rate this relationship? And please don't overthink it. Just pick a number. How would you rate it? Between one and 10. No overthinking, just from the heart, how would you rate it? So, have you rated it? Are you ready to move on? Once you've rated it, it's got a number. Ask yourself, what would, what would make it a 10? And I'm asking this because often we think, I'm not satisfied with this relationship because he's not giving me flowers. We don't have fun nights out. We don't do this. Um, he's always doing that. We come to it with that negative focus. But what if we came to it with that positive focus of, of what would make it a 10? What can I bring here that would make it a 10? So instead of focusing on what is missing, you're actually focusing on what would make it better. Do you see the difference here? So I love thinking about how can I make this even better? And I do that all the time in relationships, in even having a cup of tea, how could this be even better? Like, because 
the better it gets, the better it gets, and the more enjoyment I get out of it. So feel free to comment. And if you're watching the replay, why don't you just pause here and start thinking about, well, really, what would make it a 10? What would make this a completely fulfilling relationship? So if you go into, this would be fulfilling if only he would come home from work earlier. This would be fulfilling if he or she would not say this. Don't make it about the other person, make it about you or something that you could create together. So what would make it a 10? I can think of some relationships that would be an absolute 10 for me if I was able to talk about uh, personal development, for instance, like, you know, what I'm passionate about. So that could be one thing. So how can I start talking with this person about personal development would be something I would ask myself. Um, this would be a 10 for me if we had more fun together. How could I create more fun in this relationship? You see what I mean? And just asking yourself, how could I make it more fun or what would make it more fun? Uh, you don't have to have the solution, right? You don't have to know how to. Just ask yourself, well, what actually would make this more fun, uh, more rewarding, more motivating, more fulfilling, whatever? Whatever it is you feel is lacking. How would make, uh, what would make this re relationship more loving? How can I show more love in this relationship? Do you see how that is taking on the responsibility? And that way you get to create it. If you think, oh, it's up to the other person to create all the love in this relationship. If only he or she would do this, right? Then you're just sitting back then. You can't do anything. If you think, what can I do? Let me just get hold of the end where my responsibility is. Because I think we as humans are so focused on what we can't control, right? Can you recognize that? We're always thinking, oh, I can't uh, go to this restaurant because I don't know what's on the menu or I can't go um, to this school because, and, and it's always something that, that's out of our control. I can't go to this party because I don't know who's, who'll be there. You see what I mean? So if we just look at how can I just control my end, really? How can I work on my end? That would be so much more gratifying and to me, satisfying. So welcome to everybody who's joining. Uh, you're free to participate in the chat and I shall just move on until somebody stops me, all right? So, once you've done all that, I would like for you to ask yourself, how do I want to show up in this relationship? Who do I want to be? It's not, what do I want to do? Let's start with who you're being in a relationship. So for instance, in um, all my relationships, this is sort of a, a general plan for me in my relationships. I want to be attentive. I really love being attentive to people so that I can see what makes them happy. And, and so, you know, I've just got my, my antennae out so I can feel into really what it is that they want to be talking about, what they want to be doing. Not so that I do it, but so that I can take that into consideration. So I can see what I could do to make them even happier perhaps. So I really like being attentive and considerate. So I try not to do anything that upsets them. Uh, I want to be loving in my relationships. I want to be respectful, obviously. And I sometimes pride myself on being non-judgmental. But of course, that's not true, is it? Because we all judge sometimes, and that's okay. But at least I'm willing to be non-judgmental. And um, if, if ever I'm, I'm aware that I'm starting to judge a little bit, I can just sort of turn up, up the love element and start showering them with love instead you can't love somebody and judge them at the same time so that's how I sort of get out of that judgment mode I like to be caring like um, on Wednesday I'm taking my best friend out for lunch and I was just at the 
beauticians today and I saw um, an oil, a body oil that she really likes. So I bought it for her. So I, I like, you know, sort of coming up with surprises for friends and family and people who surround me and, and sort of up-leveling our whole experience by little things. So that to me is a sign to her that I care about her. I also like to be punctual. So in case you're late, I'm sorry, I always start on time unless, you know, there's a major problem. Uh, I like to be responsible. I'm responsible for me. I'm responsible for what I can control. Uh, I like to be always honest. If I can't be bluntly honest, because that might hurt the person, um, I always try to see whether what I'm saying is um, a reflection of what I think. It might not be all of what I think, but I always make sure that I'm not saying something I don't believe. So, ask yourself, what would you need to believe about the other person in the relationship to be all of that? Everything I just mentioned for me, obviously, this could be different from yourself. And I'm just talking about me, really, to, to explain the exercise to you. Maybe that might inspire you. So, I want to believe about other people in the relationships where I am that they deserve my attention. They deserve it because... They're gorgeous human beings and they're in my life. And I always need to believe that they will welcome my love. I want to believe that they are upright people and that they always act with or in integrity. That is something I really appreciate. Uh, they show me they care whenever there's a possibility, right? So I know that they're always looking to show me how much they care. And that is such good thoughts about them. I really enjoy that. So reality check. If reality shows you that they are not all of this, if it's showing you that they're not respectful and they're not, uh, they're not being attentionate, no, that's not the word, attentive. Uh, if you feel that they don't really show you the love, uh, maybe it's time to filter them out. Right? And that's okay. It's okay not to have the same friends all through life. Some people will stay and some people will leave. That's okay. That's what life is about. You just go out and meet new friends. And that's perfectly okay. Right? You don't have to stay in relationships. You are completely free to end the relationships whenever you want. That is always a possibility. And I like to say to myself, like, really in all my relationships, do I really want to be friends with this person still? Well, you can always ask yourself that. And then if you get a full yes, then that's so life affirming, isn't it? And if you say, well, actually, I'm not enjoying being with them, or actually, I'm not enjoying our conversation or I, I feel that there's some hostility or, you know, you can decide whether you want to tackle it, whether you want to get to grips with it or whether you just want to filter them out, really. You don't have to tell people bluntly that you don't want to be friends with them anymore. You can do that lovingly and gracefully, can't you? So also in all your friendships, relationships, always ask yourself, well, what, what do I want to do for them? do for them. I want them to feel they can ask for help with all my friends. I want to be ready and willing to help them. I want to love on them. I want to be free to love them. I want to cook for them sometimes when they come for dinner. Um, I want to help out with their children. I mean, whatever. I feel that the person would need or want I would like to be able to do that for them. And when I do it for them, I'm not expecting them to do the same for me. I'm not expecting it. And I'll talk about that later in, when we talk about our expectations. What is it for you? What would you like to do for the person in your relationship that you chose to work on? Also, ask yourself, what do I want to do with them? Right? 
Because I feel that some people get so passive in relationships. So I don't know what they're expecting that the relationship will just go on without anybody taking any initiative in it. So what do you want to do with them? And I love when people invite me to do stuff with them, be it going for a bike ride or to a restaurant or, or just gardening together, whatever. Like, I, I think we need to be proactive in all our relationships, find things to do together. That's a way of nurturing relationships. And remember, most of us have been in lockdown or, or confinement or whatever it's called where you live. Like we've been isolated from social contact. Now, if we can, now is the time to go out and really enjoy it, be proactive. So many of my clients tell me uh, that they're not happy in, in a relationship, but they don't take any initiative either because perhaps they're thinking, uh, I'm not sure they would appreciate it, right? So they don't plan uh, a weekend away, for instance, because they're not sure the person they want to go on the weekend with will appreciate it. And of course, you can't be sure. There's no guarantee, is there? And that's okay. Like you could be completely wrong. You could be wrong, right? And that's okay, because if you plan a weekend away, you check in with the person to see whether they want it. Well, if they don't, well, then they don't, and it doesn't matter, right? But try and come up with things to do with people. Ask yourself, well, what can you give? And on that account, uh, several of you asked me, well, I'm in a new area, uh, and I haven't got any friends. And I know it's difficult to make friends when you arrive somewhere new. I just talked to you about Paris. Um, living in Paris, not knowing anybody, not being able to speak French. Like, how would I make friends? I did make friends. And it, it starts with one person, right? You make friends with one person who then invites you to meet some of their friends. And you make friends with them. And it's sort of, you have to get started at one point. But an even more concrete example was when I moved from Paris down here to the south of France, I moved to a tiny little village with just 200 and I don't know, 30 people like living there. And I didn't know anybody again. I was just, I felt I was dumped there. And I thought, oh wow, I just made some friends in Paris. Now I have to do it all over again. So how can I do that? And I always find it so rewarding to give. So I started a choir. I started a choir in that village because I used to be a musician. Well, that's another story, but I had something to offer. So I started the choir and first of, to start off with, there was just six of them and then there were nine and then there were 12. And so it sort of escalated like that. But I was never short of friends. Do you see what I mean? I started off by giving like, Giving, not from the expectation of getting anything in return, but I was giving. And I think that's a really good way to start making friends. Give first, ask no questions, don't expect a return, just give what you've got to give. Give from the heart. Uh, so my example of being proactive would be, I want to share my passion for nature. Let's plan a trip out in nature. Or I want to help them enjoy evenings out. Let's plan an evening out. I want to present them to modern art because I adore modern art. Let's, you know, so you, you're always proposing something. Right? People might not have the time. So what? They can only say no, okay? So I also said right at the beginning that it's okay to have expectations. And I keep saying, don't, have it, don't expect anything in return, right? Because when you're offering something, when you're giving, uh, you haven't got an agreement with the other people. They haven't opted in, right? They haven't said, yes, okay, I will give you that in return. So expectations that have not been validated are not very good to entertain. It's okay to have expectations in all your relationships with your employer, with your friends, your family, anybody, but you need to get clear on them. And then you need to be able to communicate them clearly. 
And if your expectations do not match, then you either have to stop the relationship or find a viable solution. You can't be in a relationship where the, your expectations don't match. You will always be disappointed. The other person will always be disappointed, right? It won't be good. So you might say, well, um, I haven't got a good relationship with my brother. Well, have a conversation with him. What are your expectations of him? Right? Make them clear to him. If you can't honor them, and if you can't find a compromise, if you can't find a situation where both of you are happy, it's really not worth pursuing the relationship, even if it's somebody close. That's how I see it. So in my relationships, there are must-haves like expectations that I need to be met. So for instance, with my husband, I, ex I told him I expect you to be faithful. I expect you to spend time every weekend with me, except obviously if he's away or we are doing something with other people or whatever. And I expect you to do your part of the chores, right? If, if you can't agree on this, then we haven't got a relationship, very clear. So um, if all of a sudden I see my husband not spending time with me over the weekend, well, then I can ask myself, where am I not spending sufficient time with myself? I always bring it back to myself. It's not his problem. I've got my end to have a look at, and there's so much information to be gathered when you're willing to have a look inside yourself, because people are like mirrors. They reflect ourselves back to us. And I'm just pausing here, because you can agree or not agree, but have a look around you. Have a look at the people in your life and see whether they don't reflect back exactly your opinion of yourself. If they don't respect you, maybe you don't respect yourself. If they don't act lovingly, kindly towards you, maybe you're not doing that yourself. So I think being with other people is so fascinating. Well, I love people anyway. I love seeing how they work and get inspired by that. But I also love being with them because right smack bang in front of my face, I have got immediate feedback on my emotional state, on my beliefs about myself, about the world. I've got all that reflected onto me. And it's sometimes so much easier to see it in other people, isn't it? And I learned this in the most brutal manner, I find, uh, when I was a school teacher to children, teenagers, uh, I used to work in the French educational system and I was a teacher. And I learned so much from that experience. I would never do it again because it was the hard, hardest thing I ever did in my entire life. But I learned so much because these little kiddos, there was no filter. So if I came to class feeling upset, they would be upset. If I started doubting myself in class, they would start doubting me. Do you see what I mean? I always had immediate feedback on my own emotional state. And once I accepted that, I got my power back, do you see? Because once I understood how that worked, I could just see all that in myself and start working on my end. And once I did that, everything changed. Everything really changed. So let me dive into that. If you feel that people treat you with disrespect, ask yourself, where am I not showing respect? And you, you will be somewhere. You might not be able to see it straight away, but maybe you are not a very good driver and you're not very respectful of people on the road. Maybe you're criticizing the government all the time. Maybe you're not treating the government with the respect that they are entitled to. I believe if you live in a democracy, 
somebody around you voted for them, right? So uh, think what you will. They are your government. They, they deserve your respect. Maybe it's your parents. Maybe you feel that your parents didn't give you a good deal. So be it. Maybe it's yourself you're not showing respect to, but there is a respect issue somewhere in your life. You can only get triggered by something that you suspect is true. So we can go on with the example of respect, but we can also take another one that might be more, more easy to sort of dissect. Um, I used to think that I was lazy or I, I feared, I suspected that perhaps I was lazy. And that was so upsetting to me because uh, my mum was a great fighter against laziness, right? She, I think she had a little bit of the same problem, but I was a little bit afraid of being lazy. So I spent a lot of time, effort and energy proving, I thought to the world that I wasn't lazy, but I was really trying to prove it to myself. Didn't succeed there. That's a whole other story. But today I know that I'm far from lazy. So if somebody calls me a lazy slob, uh, I just will think, oh, they're wrong. <laughs> I don't know, absurd, right? I won't at all be triggered by it. You can only be triggered by what you suspect could perhaps be true. So when people are saying those things to you, you don't like hearing, just have a look at what proportion of truth you feel there is in it. And when I say truth, it doesn't mean that it is objectively speaking true. It means that somewhere inside yourself, you believe it. So when my mum told me I was lazy, I was triggered, right? I felt bad. I wanted to argue with it because I suspected it was true. You see what I mean? So we only feel hurt. We only get hurt. We only feel triggered. Um, we only get upset by those remarks that we suspect might be true. So when somebody treats us with disrespect, we get triggered because we believe they might be right. They might be right to treat us disrespectfully because maybe when we're not worth respect. So if you want to go there, if you want to dive deep, please do. But please don't judge yourself for it, right? There's no need to judge yourself. It's just you're creating awareness so that you can get your power back. You can get your part of control back. You can't control if other people are being disrespectful to you, but you can take that and have a look at it. If you feel hurt by it, maybe somewhere inside yourself, you suspect that they're right. Okay. So, I'm talking a lot about communication. So there's a verbal part and there's a non-verbal. When we are looking at how or what we say, there's what you say, which can be one thing, and then there's what you mean, right? For effectful communication, they need to be the same. So in other words, it's no use saying something if you don't mean it, right? I love you so much or, of course, I'll do the shopping. If you don't mean it, no point in saying it. And then there's all the non-verbal communication that is always going on, whether you are aware of it or not. And that is how you behave. And how you behave is determined by what you believe. Imagine coming to a friendship believing that you have got a lot to offer, that you are an interesting person, that you've got interesting conversation and that you can really be that stellar friend and you will have an amazing friendship together. And how will you behave from that place? Opposed to, uh, I need a friend because I'm not enough. 
and coming to the relationship from that angle, how would you behave? And your how you would behave your body language and everything would be completely different. Let's have a look at this example. You're late again and I cooked for you. Now it's spoiled. You don't value me. That is what the words that come out of your mouth, right? And I've been there. So what I meant at the time was, I'm so disappointed that you chose to spend your time elsewhere than with me. I'm worried that you don't esteem me or care for me. I'm feeling resentful that you don't recognize the effort I go through. That is really what I meant when I said that. I might not have said exactly that, but that sort of constellation. So please transpose this to your, um, your relationships, right? What you say, what you mean. So when the two underlines, the person you're speaking to really has only got your body language and all the rest to tell him what you mean. So the defensive reaction that's coming from this, from saying something you don't mean is nonsense. Something really important came up. Don't make such a big deal out of it, right? That's a defensive reaction to what you just said with your words. Uh, had you said what you really meant, had you spoken about what you really felt, then perhaps if the person is a loving one would say, I'm so sorry that you feel like this. That was not my intention. I didn't mean to hurt you. I didn't mean to upset you. You're right that I don't manage my time very well. All right, so that's an issue here. The person is recognizing that mm, I'm identifying a problem, maybe not the problem that you identify. This to me is a problem. How can I make it up to you? So that's the understanding reaction. So you are creating a re reaction through your communication. Is it something you say but don't mean, or is it something that you really mean? And if you really mean it, and if you're able to articulate it, which is not always possible, is it? If you're very angry, you can't say what you really think. Well, sometimes it's really difficult to know what you really think because anger can hide so many things, right? So it also feels very vulnerable to say, well, actually I'm disappointed and hurt because it makes us feel weak, doesn't it? But I mean, why would we want to be in a relationship where we can't be vulnerable? I can't see that. So that's how you behave and what you believe. So if you believe he's not respecting me and my work, I just cook dinner and he's not respectful of that, I'm unworthy of true love and respect. I'm not happy in this relationship. You, you're going to behave with an attitude. You're going to sulk or shout or scream and your body language, well, it's not going to be very loving, is it? So just to show that your thoughts really, really translate into how you are, how you are in the moment. So maybe you've heard about the 55387 formula, and this is about face-to-face -face communication. In face-to-face -face communication, when you can see each other, the postural component dominates in determining the total attitude that is inferred. And that means, in plain English, that um, when we are in front of somebody, their general attitude accounts for 55% of what we understand, what we infer, what we believe to be true. 38 is conveyed through the tone of voice, through other behavior, right? And only 7% is conveyed through the actual words. So that's why I think it's so important to have the right beliefs in place. If we believe thoughts that serve us, that serve us in our relationship, if we are really convinced that we are coming to this relationship in love and the other person wants our love and all the other good things, then if we believe that, our communication is going to be just that. Right? So also when there's a conflict between verbal and nonverbal communication, it's the nonverbal one that wins. 
So in my example, you could be saying, or I could have been saying, well, great, you're back home, let's have dinner. Right? But if my belief was, he's spiting me, he's not being kind, blah, 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 blah. Uh, that is what he would be picking up on. And just think about it. This is what you are picking up on in your relationships. So you could be thinking, well, he said that um, he really appreciated my cooking. And then you could have a doubt about that. And if you have a doubt about that, it's because that was not really his belief. Right? You pick up on where people do not say what they mean, really pick up on it. So don't get, don't get too focused on the actual words. Tune in, draw out your aerial, pick up the signals and trust yourself to decipher what the other person is really saying and really believing. So my invitation for you is to take responsibility so you cannot, as I said, control the other person, but you can control yourself. And you can take responsibility by creating awareness of what your expectations are and how you communicate them. So you can say to your partner, I expect you to be faithful, and then really believe that that is his desire too. Right? And have a talk about it even if it's a tough conversation, even if you, like if you're a people pleaser and you think, oh, if I ask him to be faithful, he might not want to go out with me. Or if I tell my friends that I expect to, to see them at least once a month or once a week or whatever it is, your expectations. If you're afraid that this will be a deal breaker, like for me in, in all my relationships, if people are racist or sexist or cruel to animals, it's just a, it's not a possibility for me to engage in any kind of relationship with them, right? I just don't accept that. So that means that, well, I haven't actually been in such a, perhaps with racism, yeah, I think I've had to cut people off for racism and sexism. So um, you have to be willing to risk the relationship. But just think, you're not really risking a lot because you don't want those people in your life anyway, do you? I mean, if they don't want to, to live up to your expectations, well, then you don't want them in your life. So you can have deal breakers or must haves, and you can have um, things that you're willing to negotiate on. So that could be um, anything really. What are you willing to open up to? And, and I like to keep as many things open as possible because then I really get to discover the other person. Maybe they've got something super fascinating to propose to me. Maybe they're going to open my eyes to a lot of things that I didn't even knew existed. Right? So I like to be open to suggestions. Uh, I like to be open to other ways of doing things I like doing. I mean, I like to be open to all of that. And then at least I get to test drive it, right? I can participate in it a few times and see whether I like it or not. So it's really a balance between having your values, what are your deal breakers in place, what your expectations are exactly, and what you're willing to negotiate on. And the more that that can be present for you. I mean, you don't have to verbalize everything as soon as you meet people. Oh, do you want to be my friend? I want you to be this and that and that. Um, that's not how it happens, is it? So if, if you believe it, if you believe I'm in this friendship and in this friendship, we both want this, and then you start doing it, well, then it becomes immediately apparent whether that is the case or not, whether you've got a friendship here. So I also want to invite you to think about this, and that is what I work with a lot of my clients on, is if you're in a relationship, I see that like scales. So there are two people here. If this person changes, either goes down, up or down, moves in any sort of direction, as there are communicating scales, the other will have to move too. And that means 
that if somebody changes, the other person will have to change too. You can't control how they change, but they cannot stay the same. So that means in a relationship, if you're always arguing, if you stop arguing, if you just don't go there, if you create a different belief that will create a different behavior, well, then the other person must change too. They cannot stay the same. And I find that so encouraging. I just need to change my end and the other end will change automatically. Once the other end changes, then I can ask myself, is this what I want? Or do I want to stop it altogether, right? But it's just, it gives you so much power really to know that if you change, the other person must change. Think about it. And let's sum up. I don't know what the time is. It's time to sum up. So you can design your relationships to be satisfying. Satisfying relationships make for a happy life experience. You're in charge, you get to decide. So take your power back, take responsibility. Go, if, if you have got difficulties in relationships, don't go for um, completely, I don't know what we can call them, um, amazing relationships, just go for satisfying. And if you're all, already in satisfying, why don't you up level and say, well, actually I want deep, relationships right so that you always get what you want because you you're worth it right so to review your relationships go through the exercise again ask yourself on a scale from one to ten how satisfied am i in this relationship and what would make it a ten that way you focus on what is positive what you can do and you avoid looking at what to crit criticize and what you want the other person to do. Whatever this is, look inside to see where you're doing or being just that. Where am I being open to interesting conversation? Where am I opening the door to more enjoyment? Where am I uh, creating the fun? Ask yourself, where am I doing that and how can I be or do more so? Communication, state your expectations clearly. See if they match your partners, your friends, your colleagues, whatever. If they don't match, find a viable solution. So a way of stating your expectations could be, I mean, if you're not in a very close relationship, if it's not intimate, just signal when, when um, your expectations are not met. So let's say in your family, if somebody behaves towards you in a way, that you don't want them to behave, you have to signal it, right? So they can get clear on what your expectations are. So you can tell them when you do this, I think this, I believe this, I feel this. So this is what I would want, right? This is how I would like you to be with me. So that is another way of agreeing on expectations. It's when they are not being met, signaling it. Right, because you can't always sort of make a list of what you expect with everybody. You sometimes have to wait for, for an accident and then make it better from there. So it's not so much what you say as who you're being when you say it. Right? This communication that we don't, that we're not always aware of. How we're being is what we're thinking, what we really believe deep down. So you need to change what you believe in order to be differently. Of course, you can fake being, but the other person is going to pick up on that and it's going to come across as fake. So it's really much better to come from the belief. That way you've got everything behind you. You've got your whole being, your body, your mind, everything is behind it. And it's true. Right? You don't run into that being fake thing. You are being genuine because you genuinely believe it. Triggers are here to show you where you're not clear with yourself. So if you work on them, you can get to a point where you're not hurt by other people's comments. Because again, you cannot control what people will say and do, can you? You can only control your end. 
And your end is a lot easier to deal with when you have worked on these things that trigger you. Right? You can do that. We can do that. Everybody can do that. So I'm going to offer you a complimentary session where we will do just that. Uh, we can go over how to have a tough conversation with a partner, with a colleague, with a family member, with a friend, with a neighbor, whatever. And we can work on what your expectations are in that relationship and how you can communicate them effectively, uh, not in an aggressive way, not in a sort of uh, barbed wired boundaries way, but in an inviting way that focuses on the desires that you have rather than your fears, right? So we come to, to our friendships or whatever relationships with that desire. And also we can go through what you can do to renovate your old relationships. And I put in renovate because I quite like that um, as an idea, but it's really, how can you re remodel? How can you up-level your relationships? How can you make them more a reflection of your best self, which is always what we're seeking, isn't it? So that is my offer to you. You can book a session with me and I enjoy meeting you. I always enjoy meeting all of you. Um, and you don't have to be grateful to me, right? It's not a waste of my time. Um, I enjoy meeting you because as I say, I enjoy meeting people. So let me just perhaps show you how you can make an appointment. So this is a complimentary session, right? Where we go over whatever comes up for you in relationships. So you go to this page basically, and you choose a time. And you come to the appointment and I will really walk you through it. It's not something you have to prepare for. Uh, if you're open to coaching, uh, you will know that coaching can change your life, right? It can change your life through how you think about anything in your life. And when you think differently about things, as I tried demonstrating to you, you will behave differently. When you behave differently, you will have different results in your life. And you can start with relationships. You can start with anything, but start you must. If you want change, you have to get change from somewhere right? And if you keep doing the things you've always been doing, if you keep doing the same thing, there's no chance of different results, are there? No chance. I'm just looking for the chat. It's here to post the link where you can go and book an appointment. So I put it up now in the chat and it's almost the top of the hour and I'm ready to answer your questions or coach any of you should you wish on anything. Uh, knowing that if you get coaching on something, it might be helpful to another person who might not have the courage to move on, to go on. Um, so what we could do would be to work on your ideas, your beliefs. I find it useful to start there. And if you book a session, this is where we'll start. I will walk you through your beliefs. We will have a look at them so that they are not sort of buried somewhere. They are there somewhere, right? So we will draw them out. You're welcome, Christy. Um, we will draw them out to have a look at them. And I, I find that when, when we really discover one of those beliefs, well, then it's so empowering because we, we can first of all ask ourselves, is this serving me? And I'm not saying, is it true, right? I'm saying, is it serving me? So if I'm thinking I'm not worth being in a loving relationship, I don't care whether it's true or not. I can just ask myself, is it serving me? And that thought is not serving you, is it? It's not serving anybody because we're all worth being in. I mean, we're all worthy of being in a loving relationship. So I ask myself, is this thought serving me? And once I can see, well, no, it's not serving me. What do I want to believe instead? So that's when the interesting work starts because what, 
or am I willing to believe? And a first step on the ladder could just be, I'm willing to be open to being worthy of love. I'm willing to be open to more love. I'm open to see that person loving me. I'm open to see myself differently. I want to see myself differently, right? So this is what I can help you with. It's transforming those thoughts so that we go from that dissatisfied mode to the satisfied mode, right? And maybe in one session, we can't get all the way to elation, right? But we can get to a much better feeling thought. Once you've got that thought, your feelings will change. Once your feeling changes, uh, your feelings change, sorry, you will behave differently. Is that making sense? Right, I hope that is making sense. You're welcome, Lady Pippa. <laughs> Great, I'm so grateful to you too. And I'm very happy. I'm really happy to be meeting all of you. And if ever you're in doubt about whether to contact me, just, just do it because I love hearing from you. I had such a brilliant woman contact me from Spain. And she said, um, your workshops, I mean, it's all very well, but I'm not, a, I mean, English is not my native language and I don't understand some of the words. So could you put some subtitles on? <laughs> and um, I thought, oh, wow, that's an idea. How do we do that? And actually it was very easy. Uh, Sally just uploaded the video to YouTube and we put the automatic subtitles on. So bingo, there you go, right? But unless she had told me that, I would never have that idea. Oh, well, I, may, I might have had it, but I wouldn't have acted on it because I didn't know somebody needed it, right? So I think I can serve you so much better when I know what you need. And you don't have to be a paying client for that to happen. I can learn from you even if you're not paying. So please don't think you have to be grateful or that you're taking up my time or attention. That is not how I see it at all. When I offer it, it's because I can. Right. And that's another thing in relationships, actually, when you've got so much love for yourself, some of it spills over and you can gift it to other people. Isn't that gorgeous? Right. It's feeling all that love for yourself. When you love yourself, it's not being selfish. Right. It's taking care of you first so that you are worth so much more to other people. Think of me coming to a friendship and loving myself completely. I mean. How can I, I mean, how much value do I add to that person? They don't have to take care of me, right? They don't have to make sure to love me. They don't have to tell me they love me. They don't have to do anything for me because I'm already good, right? I'm not needing anything from them. If they give me something, it's just an extra, it's the icing on the cake. And I was thinking also, um, I can't see the people who ask me, about creating new friendships. And I'm all for creating new friendships all the time, right? We always want new friends because some of them get left behind because we're always evolving. So please always be on the lookout, creating new friendships or just creating a relationship. It might become a friendship. It might become somebody nice to meet in the street, no matter. But always be on the lookout of how you can participate in life really, how can you be out there? How can you be creating links between you and other people? And my husband says to me, uh, when we're in a restaurant, if he goes away for like one minute, when he comes back, I'm always chatting to somebody. He says, you always start chatting to people as soon as I leave. And I don't, they start chatting with me. And I'm sure it's because I'm sitting there thinking, I love these people, they look so interesting. I think they can feel it. I think we're communicating that uh, to other people. So I, I was at them in a shop just a few hours ago and somebody started talking to me too. And I think I must appear inviting, right? 
And I think it's not that I want to be appearing inviting. It's because I've got the belief that I want to talk to people. I want to engage with them. Not so that we become friends. I mean, the pe person in the shop, I don't think I'm ever going to see him again, right? It's not, it's not so that. It's just, wow, I'm here. We're waiting in a, in a line. Let us just exchange a few words. Isn't life just much more interesting that way? So I get a lot of thank yous. Well, you're welcome. I haven't got any questions. Does anybody want to come on for some, some coaching or not, or just to mention their problems in the chat? Whatever, whatever feels comfortable. If of course you don't want the coaching here, please go ahead and grab one of the sessions that I'm making available. And you don't need to be grateful for them. I'm happy to meet up with you. You are going to get some results out of it. Whether you take action on the results or not, it's up to you. But just meeting you will be a joy to me. So I can't see anybody come through. Please have a wonderful day if you still have a day in front of you. It's becoming evening over here. So I'm going to wish you an, a gorgeous evening if it's evening where you are. And if you're watching the replay, good evening, good morning, whatever. You're welcome, Rebecca. My pleasure. Thank you for putting on your camera. It's so enjoyable. So thank you for being here. Thank you for watching the replay. I shall see you very soon. Bye for now. <laughs>